Hi everyone and welcome to this new edition of the WASP development log. In this uh, edition I want to show you three new features that have been added in WASP 04005 which should allow you to highly improve your workflow when, when using WASP. So the, these three features are first of all uh, the possibility of using a part catalog not only as a limited reserve of parts but also as a proportional meaning that the number of parts will be varying uh, within the aggregation and will be more than the one listed in the um, in the catalog itself but will retain the uh, proportions between them. The second feature that I want to demonstrate is a brand new local constraint which is the adhesency and exclusion constraint and this is a constraint that is built on top of the support constraint but which now allows you to identify specific areas of each part which are required or are not allowed to be in contact with another part. And lastly we are going to see uh, the current work in progress version of um, aggregation graph component that would allow you to extract the full graph of the aggregation uh, after generating it. So let's get started. If you download the, the file that you might find in the description box of this video you'll find an aggregation which contains three parts. So it contains a box a stick and an hexagon, hexagonal prism extracted with their own connections identified. And this is connected to a rule grammar. So a rule generator which uses a specific rule grammar. If you don't know how rule grammars work you might check the rule grammar video I think it's tutorial number 5 in the WASP 101 tutorial series. And uh, we then run a stochastic aggregation and we end up with something. So we need an aggregation that follows these rules. Now I'm going to hide the base parts just not to have them in the way. Now the first thing that I wanted to demonstrate is the uh, brand new added possibility of uh, using a part catalog which uh, uses um, which allows you to set limits or proportions to the parts. So if I take this catalog and connect it to the cat input and reset this one, you will see that I said that I would like to have 30 parts of uh, the stick of the box type, 5 parts of the stick side type and 18 parts of the hexagon type. And what happens when I reset is that I actually get that and since the input of the limited catalog is set to true, the aggregation will stop when it has exhausted the number of parts that are in the catalog. Now one extra little feature that you have now is that you can actually now remove some parts and then grow them again and this will still keep the correct amounts of the catalog that was not working before. But so this will actually stop whenever it's created a number of parts that matches the total sum of what's in the catalog. If we instead would want to create an aggregation that has this uh, proportions in between the parts but can actually grow beyond that we can simply set the limited input of the catalog to false and if now I reset my aggregation you see that I can keep growing the aggregation larger but what's gonna happen is that this is gonna try as much as possible to keep the correct proportions between the parts that are specified by these amounts here but we'll keep growing the aggregation so this will not be taken as fixed quantities anymore but just as a proportion between the different parts. So this was the first feature that I wanted to demonstrate. Now the second feature that I talked about are adhesency and exclusion rules. So I'm gonna create a little bit less parts. So you see that for example um, in my grammar bridges are not allowed to connect to each other so the stick components are not allowed to connect to each other because there is no rule grammar that allows them to connect however it happens sometimes that sticks end up touching each other just because that's how that's geometrically that might happen so we have the possibility of using what's called an exclusion rule to make sure that that's not there anymore. So 
For example, in this case, what I've done is on my stick part. Uh, wait, I'm gonna maybe show it to you in Rhino. So on my stick part, I defined four lines that pass through the part and are on the sides. And I can define those lines as exclusion rules, meaning that I can say whenever one of these lines intersects another element when it's placed, it's not going to allow that to place. But not only that, but also we can also specify that that has to be a, a part of a certain type. So in this case, I have four lines. And what I said is that oh, each of those four lines is not allowed to intersect with a part of the type stick. So I write stick four times, which is one for each part, for each line here. And then I set this one as false. And when I set it to false, I'm saying that this is an exclusion rule. So this component allows you to do two things, to set exclusion rules and adjacency rules. So when it's set to true, and we're going to see it here further, it's going to require that part to be close to that. And when it's set to false, it's going to force that part not to be close to that. So if I now take my, const my um, adjacency, const my exclusion rule here, and I drag it up, uh, no, sorry. And I drag it and connect it to the adjacency and exclusion rule on my part. And I make sure that the mode of the aggregation is set to 1, meaning that I'm using local constraints. If I now reset, you see that the result that I get is that there are no bridges that are um, uh, touching each other. And that's because I set this exclusion rule. Now, what I can do with the sticks is I can also force them not to be flying, but to have them there. So now you, sh you might know how to do that with supports. The other way of doing it now is, and it's probably going to be replacing the support component entirely in a further version, is you can set an adjacency rule. So in this case, I'm saying I have, again, on my part, I have two lines, which are here and I added them to an adjacency uh, constraint. And I'm saying that these parts have to both be adjacent to a part of type box, which means that this stick cannot fly in space. If now, instead of adding just my uh, exclusion constraint, I'm going to add also my adjacency constraint. And I'm now going to reset. You see that I have my stick, my sticks that do not touch each other. And not only they do not touch each other, but they're also always supported by two boxes. And that's because we use that. Now, you can use um, adjacency and exclusion constraints also as uh, in the part independent, meaning that if you don't set the part name uh, input, it's going to work the same way as a uh, support work. So it's going to check all the parts. So in this case, I'm setting my. Uh, my hexagon here to have an adjacency constraint, and we can see it in Rhino, which is this line at the bottom, which you can see there. And so what I'm fundamentally saying is that this hexagon is not allowed to fly in space, but it always has to be supported underneath it. So if now I look at my aggregation, you might see that, okay, in this case, it's not the case, but if I'm going to reset a couple of times. You'll see that I'm going to have flying hexagons. If I'm now going to add my adjacency constraint to the AC input of the exa part, and I'm going to reset it, you'll see now that all my hexagons are somewhat supported by uh, a part underneath it. And that's going to stay the same no matter how many parts I add. Of course, setting constraints will create some extra limitations. And so it might be that your part catalog, if it's set to proportional, it's not going to be able to match exactly the distributions you're given. And that's because it's very hard to place certain parts because of the constraints. But if you would set this to uh, limited, you're going to actually make sure that whatever you're building always matches the number of parts you have. And so in this case, you see that. 
I can add more or less bridges, more or less, more or less sticks, sorry, more or less of those, and those match all the constraints, and as well as, uh, so you see, sometimes it's not going to work, like in the case of setting so many constraints on the sticks, that is just not enough space to place all the sticks I wanted. So if I would never now increase this and reset, now it's going to be instead able to place some more sticks, but still it's not able to place all the 18 I gave. So you see, you have to nav manage a little bit when you start using constraints and catalogs, which still work as some sort of constraints. You're going to, of course, have some issues. However, this comes at the advantage of having various points in the aggregation now when you can start controlling what's the final result. If, for example, now I would notice that it's not possible to place all the sticks, I could, for example, go back and remove my stick um, at the uh, exclusion rule. And if now I reset, you see that it's going to be able to place all the sticks I wanted. So this is it for new aggregation methodologies that you might find in the latest WASP component. The last component that you will find is uh, something that is more there to analyze an aggregation or also to further process it, for example, create fabrication data or uh, define assembly instruction, uh, assembly sequences and so on. So this, this component is still experimental and I'm not done with it. So actually this is the only input that works. The other ones, no, this in the last one as well, the other ones are still not working. But so, what this component does is it takes an aggregation from the aggregation uh, from one of the aggregation algorithm you might want to use and what it's going to do it's going to be able to output a graph containing node and edges on how parts are connected to each other and uh, you'll see that it's able to detect uh, connections that also happen geometrically, even though they're not uh, defined by directly the aggregation. And so what's going to output is a graph object for which I'm going to provide further on um, more algorithms and more components to work with. Then it outputs a list of nodes and a list of edges. And then for each edge, you have the start ID and the end ID of each of the part which is connected to, as well as the connection among through which these two parts are connected. And so this might be really useful, for example, to create uh, joinery details or to kind of process your aggregation in a variety of ways. One little extra thing, you have um, here the possibility of, by default, the edges and the nodes and the edges are flattened, so you will see you will just get an, uh, a list of edges. If you set this to false, oop, nothing works. Okay, never mind. It's supposed to work, but I'm gonna have to fix that. So this is it for this uh, development log. I hope you will enjoy the new features. You can find them in the new WASP 0.4.005 on GitHub. Most of these features are still new and experimental and I haven't really tested them, neither in a teaching nor in a research context. So I'm very much looking forward to hear your feedback and whether you would want to see them implemented in a different ways or what you can see them used for. So thanks for watching and see you in the next episode.